We were playing Green Bay and Milwaukee. We were getting beat 24 to 3 at that time, and he just stunk up the place, throwing interceptions, just everything. So I looked at Kevin Glover, our all pro center, and I said, Glove, that is it. I say I'm getting him out the game. So I gave it the the set out, and but I got the gator arms on the guy at the last minute. He got around me. He hit Scott Mitchell. He did something to his finger. I don't know which finger it was, but he came out the game. Oh. Dave Craig came in the game. We ended up losing that game 27 to 24. We lost. That was our Lomas Brown on the Scott Van Pelt radio show last week. And this is uh, Scott Mitchell's response. He says, quote, it's just, I just really hurt. It was extremely disappointing. I'm really shocked by it, to be honest. Here's a guy I've had in my house. I had a big dinner for the offensive lineman every year. He came to my house and ate dinner. I gave my offensive lineman gifts every year. For him to, for him to do that is just reprehensible, beyond words. It's really disappointing. It really is painful. When you mess with my family, mess with my livelihood, mess with my health, it's unacceptable. It's BS. I just wouldn't do it to a teammate. I wouldn't do it. If Lomas has a problem with me, come talk to me. To try to get someone hurt, it's just mind-boggling. People get seriously hurt in this game. For someone to just lay down like that, it's unacceptable. So Lomas is obviously here um, at the desk. Lomas, what is your reaction to this? Well, you know, I think about uh, what happened. Uh, that was 1994. Um, and I was extremely frustrated, I was extremely frustrated with the situation that was going on. Um, and, you know, I didn't try to get the guy hurt, but that's what ended up happening. Um, and, you know, yeah, Scott did have us over to the house and everything, and I felt that I was a good teammate to Scott. It was just a lot of the circumstances around that. Um, do I regret it happened? Yeah, I regret it happened. Did I regret it happened then? No, I didn't regret it, it happened then. Um, so, I mean, right now, um, I expected Scott to react that way. Uh, that's kind of the way that he should have reacted. Um, I don't blame him for reacting that way. Uh, but Scott knows, you know, a lot of things that went on too in Detroit. So. You know, I don't know what I can say now. I've already said it is out there. Um, and like I say, I expected him to react in that way. I probably, if the shoe had been on the other foot, I probably would have uh, reacted that way too. No, I wouldn't have probably. I know I would have reacted that way, probably a little worse than that. So, you know, I don't blame Scott. Uh, and, you know, hopefully we'll talk about it. All right. Well, are you going to reach out to him? You think you will? Oh, yeah. I'll reach out to him. Okay. Um, you know, I haven't seen Scott. Oh, man. I haven't seen Scott really since I left Detroit. Um, and, you know, I know that this is something, you know, I probably played from my 18-year career. They say you average probably about 1,000 or so plays a game. So I know I've played well over 18,000 plays, uh, excluding practice in this league. And, yeah, you, it's one play out of the 18,000 that I regret. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's done. It's out there. Um, I'm not going to retract. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses. Um, I know America is looking at me and they're like, wow. But I'm not going to make excuses. You get frustrated during the course of the game. Um, you do things that, you know, a lot of times that you think about later on in life, you don't think about right there because it's in the heat of the moment, moment, but you think about later on in life. And the one thing I do, I can say is, I should have been more tactful at how I said that. That was wrong on my part. I should have humbly said that. It was, it came off boastful. Um, and it shouldn't, I shouldn't have said it that way. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I said it, I can't take it back, but I shouldn't have said it the way I said it. All right, it. well done, big fellow. Adrian Peterson uh, kind of says he wants to talk about breaking Eric Dickerson's record. He, talk, he spoke about it recently, so let's listen to what he had to say. I do good with pressure. You know, I, I'm able just to relax and, and understand that, you know, if it happens, it happens. If not, you know, it wasn't meant to happen. Maybe next year, you know, uh, God's willing. You know, if that's, the, if that's the case, you know, I plan on breaking it and I want to. But if, if that's the case, that's exactly how I'm going to look at it. And I'm going to approach it. Um, you know, the way I approach this season next year. 
All right, let's speak in percentages, fellas. Um, what chance do you give Peterson to break the record this Sunday against the Packers? And I'll start with you first, Chris. Uh, I'm going on the high side, and I'm going to go 75%. And I know that seems really, really high, but, you know, people talk about, you know, should they go for the playoff win or should they go for the win that gets them in the playoffs? Should they go for the record? I don't look at them being mutually exclusive. I think your best chance of winning is by handing the ball off to Adrian Peterson. But when he carries the ball 20-plus times per game, the Vikings are 7-1. and one. And look at the performance mm -hmm. he had last time against the Packers rushed for 210 yards against uh, against Green Bay I mean he had a phenomenal performance he's 14th uh, Green Bay is 14th against the rush this year I think handing the ball off to him every single time is going to be beneficial for the Vikings It's going to help them win the game it's going to keep that Packers offense off the field it's going to do so many different things they're going to make that team successful I mean did Christian Ponder suddenly turn to Joe Montana <laughs> in the last couple of last weeks week. I mean, he had a good game last week but would you say your best chance to handing the ball off to AP than giving the ball to Christian Ponder yeah. and him, giving him a chance to win the game. I think he does. I think he has a big game against a bad rush defense in Green Bay. They win the game and they get the rushing record. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to go next uh, because uh, you said you were kind of on the high side. I guess I'm not the ultimate low side. I'm going to say he has zero chance. Yeah. Wow. Zero chance of breaking the record. Yes, he rushed for over 200 against Green Bay first time, but that was the only 200 yard rusher in the last six seasons. Okay, so he's not going to get it again. But more importantly, this is going to have to do more with the fact that Green Bay can put up some points on this defense. Mm -hmm. And can Christian Ponder throw the ball? Because in the end, if you're playing catch-up, you just can't run the ball every single down like they want to because that's really their formula. Okay, we're going to know right away that when the game starts uh, you know, what their scheme is because their goal is to run Christian Ponder, keep Aaron Rodgers off the field. Right. But if they can't convert third downs, if they can't score in the red zone, then they're going to have to play catch-up. And they can't run Adrian Peterson every single down. It's just too, it's just too obvious. And they're going to need to play catch up. So it's, it has less to do about, about what the game plan is going to transcend to in the second, third, fourth quarter based on the fact that I feel like they're going to have to play catch up. I agree 100% with that. I think in the first quarter, we're going to find out if he's going to break the record. I mean, if they fall behind 17 to 3 mm -hmm. or some number like that, where they can't just hand the ball off him every single time. But if they're able to keep Rodgers off the field early on just by handing it off, he's shown he's capable of breaking off these 60, 70 yard runs. He's shown he can bust through through, you know, eight, nine, ten men in the box on the line of scrimmage. He's been able to do that all season long. He's a freak of nature. I have no idea how he's been doing they it. They made I mean, him in a lab. You know he, that. He's, he's un, <laughs> he's, his recovery has been the most yeah. mind-boggling mm -hmm. of any athlete I can remember right. in recent memory. But I, I think that if they're able to contain that offense and keep Rodgers off the field and pound the ball to him 20, 25, maybe even above that, during the game, he's got a great chance of doing it. I'm going to go 40%. Okay. And the reason why I'm going that is I think now it's being reported that he might have a abdominal problem. So, you know, you got that little injury on top of it. Um, great back. Explosive. To me, the MVP and the comeback player of the year wrapped into one. What he's been doing has been phenomenal but again I got another story <laughs> I, go back, I go back to 1994 oh boy. Barry Sanders we trying to get Barry Sanders trying to go for uh, 2,000 yards we were playing the Dolphins last game of the year and we needed 150 yards to get Barry to 2,000 yards Chris Christian I I swear, it seemed like it was like 13, 14 defenders out on the field, man. <laughs> Guys were coming from everywhere. They knew what was at stake. They didn't, and they were saying that during the game, we're not going to let him break the record against us. We don't want to go in the record book as had this guy going over 2,000 yards against us. Mm -hmm. And they played. Those guys swarmed. They didn't really worry about the run. They sat on the, uh, uh, the pass. They sat on the run all day long. And I think that's what AP is going to see all day long. And the most important thing with him is if you notice a lot of his big runs they've been cutbacks they he'll stick his foot in the ground and he, but he's looking backside and that's where a lot of big runs come from I think Green Bay gonna make sure they keep their gap integrity guys won't leave the gaps I think they're gonna stay there I really think they're gonna force him to make Kristen Ponda win the game for you know them. if this was like if this wasn't an important game for both teams you know you have the 49ers playing the Cardinals that, that has an impact on the Packers and the Minnesota Vikings game if, and they're both playing at the same time. So if this was a game where, you know, the Packers kind of could rest some guys, 
uh, and it really didn't mean anything for Minnesota, I would probably give him a better chance. But this is this is going to be a slugfest. This is going to be uh, you know an intense, highly competitive game against two teams that really can't rest. Any the Packers have a chance to rest, so it's all in. It's all hands and on let's deck. Not forget, Stop this guy. Let's not forget 200 yards. That's a lot, a lot of yards. yards. That is a big play. It's exactly. more than one big play. Exactly more than one. Right. More than exactly one huge play. Right. But you talked about the motivation of the Packers defense potentially to stop him from breaking that record. I look at the other side of it. And if you could sniff a record like this, you oh, can almost yeah. taste it right in front of you. This guy has the talent to, to go out there and do it. And maybe I've been reading too many short stories, but it's like, I feel like this is a, you know, a, a season of destiny for Adrian Peterson. I mean, just coming back was miraculous enough for this player. I mean, I just feel like he might have one more big game in him. That's why I give him yeah. such a high chance to yeah. do it. Oh, I agree with that. All right, you guys, let's